Hello, hello. Welcome to JJ's Watch Hangout. I am your Thursday host, uh, the Squatch Box, the Watch Sasquatch. Uh, you can find me at the Squatch Box over on Instagram. Um, it is a light Thursday. Uh, hopefully people are getting over the hangover that was Valentine's Day on Tuesday. Um, oh, hey, Watch Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And we have... <laughs> We have the boss. He's checking in on his unpaid interns to make sure we're uh, we're on time and not uh, not reading the till. I, I certainly appreciate that. So uh, today I've got the Vermont Project possible on the wrist um, to the topic of the uh, actual stream. This is a GMT watch. I chose. I have two GMT watches. GMT is my my favorite complication. I would say. Um, the uh hey hey robert wood thank you for joining us uh i chose this one in particular today before you know while we're kind of waiting for people to get on um i like this version of the gmt a little bit better than yeah there we go uh no coffee breaks no touching petty cash i i hear you man i've i've got uh, nine fingers left so i like this particular version of the GMT. It's unlike the Rolex GMTs, which are obviously iconic and kind of the, the benchmark, because I prefer the the inner Riot, right, um, to have the hour indicators for the alternate time zone, right? Well, obviously with the Rolex, it's a little bit more versatile for the GMT function itself, but then I actually like the outer bezel uh, timing. So that's the reason I wore this GMT today, as we're going to be looking at some of some watches um, that I like that are more complicated. Hey, Billy, Billy, thank you for joining us. Um, so as the the title says, right, uh, I'm looking for your favorite complications, right? I know some people are really partial to, to moon phases. Um, I'm kind of excluding the idea of like date, right? Which date is a complication, right? Um, big date is a slightly more complex complication because usually that's uh, two two discs. Oh, here we go. Uh, Billy Piccolo with 499 US. Thank you, Billy. For the best watch channel on YouTube, I tend to agree. JJ puts on a fantastic show on Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays, the original Sunday fun day. We have uh, Tan hosting on uh, Fridays often, and then we have Mr. GMT, um, and uh, with with Cap uh, hosting on Saturdays as well, and I'm I'm doing Thursdays, so we're you know we're hoping to get you five days a week of actual watch content, um, uh, the occasional insertion of uh, other topics, uh, you know, men's lifestyle in general. So I really appreciate that, Billy, um, and uh, I know JJ appreciates it absolutely. Everybody who who does just you know subscribes, upvotes the works. Um, Blake Star, <laughs> perpetual calendar with moon phase near most useful complication ever. So we'll actually be covering some watches like that. I don't, so uh, I'm a little weird, right? My favorite complication is the GMT. It's to me um, the most useful to my my heavy travel life. And I like the moon phase. You know, a lot of people talk about it being a romantic complication. I like it visually, but I have no in between like GMT and going all the way up to perpetual calendars. Like, so there's a bunch of stuff in between that I don't really care for, but all of a sudden, like at the very top end, that perpetual calendar, minute repeaters, turbulence, then I really love them again. Right. So I'm a little broken that way. I've got to go. If I can't get all the way there, I just won't bother to go. Bright blue comet. Um, <laughs> love me some Molly. Me love you long time. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is my favorite representation of the GMT movement, the Vermont uh, Project Possible. It's a little bit different than some of the other GMTs, but it's obviously the Rolex uh, GMTs are the the icon and pinnacle. So um, I'm gonna start sharing out some of the ones that you know have caught my eye. Um, recently from some folks, but I definitely want everybody to share what their favorite complicated watches are. Um, I'm going to start with, I, I call this the, uh, the Swiss uh, complication, right? So I'm going to start with this, this VC, 
right? So this is um, a very uh, elegant and smooth looking patrimony. It's a minute repeater, right? So it has the gong. Um, this is just a beautiful looking watch, right? And as I said, I kind of go uh, right to the top with some of these things. Um, <laughs> I can't respond to that, Blake. That's that's pretty funny though. Um, the uh, this is you know this is I think this is a uh, a, a lot of the watches actually I chose to show today are are um, priced on on request. Um, so oh, real quick, it looks like Watch Nicholas. I thank you, Watch Nicholas. I was not aware this was going to happen. Um, it looks like people have been magically transported uh, over from Watch Nicholas's live channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, welcome, Chili Badger, Strider. Of course, Watch Nicholas again. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, the oh, circular economy. Yeah, I really do appreciate that. Um, at Watch Nicholas, I don't know how to return the favor. I'm sure JJ does, and JJ will be, uh, you know, joining us as time provides. Um, but really do appreciate that. And uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, JJ did it. Definitely go subscribe to the Washington Coast Live Show. Um, I do appreciate Washington Coast. So, uh, JBJB, member of the crew, good to see you. Appreciate it. So starting, you know, again, everybody chime in with your favorite complicated watches, but starting with his Vacheron, I. I would call this the Swiss, right? This is the Stefan Vacheron from my perspective. It is beautiful, simple, elegant as all hell. I love the fact, just separate of the complications, that the way that they uh, mix the indices up in here and the hands are just so um, smooth, contoured. You have the seconds indicator on the side, the crown, and it you know just blends right into the shape and it offsets the balance of the actual minute repeater gong function. Love, 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 love um, uh, the way this watch looks, right? So this is, I guess, again, price on request. This is just 8.1 millimeters, nothing. 41 millimeter diameter. If I wore many dress watches, I could probably pull this one off. Um, the manual wound, right, powers are nearly th three days. So this is a really, you know, nice example of, it's a high-end complication, right? Um Absolutely. Right. Chili Badger. Totally agree. Very classy, uncluttered. It's a beautiful watch. Now, since I'm not classy and I'm not uncluttered, as you can see, none of the other watches will be this nice. Beautiful, at least. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely, Robert. Thank you, everybody. Throw an upvote in there. It helps us unpaid interns keep our, our jobs. Basil, thank you for joining us. Um, no comment. I'm stepping it. I will avoid getting into... Uh, uh, something that I have no firsthand experience with. Um, so we will, I want to catch as many of these comments. Um, I'll keep pulling them up as we're kind of, kind of talking. Uh, Turtle Knight, thank you for joining in the upvote. Uh, Watch Aficionado, thank you for showing up. And yes, absolutely. Watch Nicholas Live. Mossy, thank you for subscribing. Um, uh, and I appreciate all the crew members being here as well. So again, you know, the the really really beautiful this is a featherweight for a complication um uh the transparent case back i mean take a look at that finishing this is vc finishing right this is just gorgeous um uh, finishing uh what you come to expect from from vc I wish it wasn't, you know, price on request. Let's see what other images they got in here for us at this particular one with this minute repeater. I got that. The ass end is just something else, right? This is just fantastic. Um, I don't recall if this is, a, it's price on request, but I don't recall if it's limited to X number a year. Um, let's see what else. Oh, they have it alongside one of the ladies' watches. They're, they're flexing. Yeah, nice wrist shot. So I like this. I like these wrist shots. It is pretty. It is pretty. Um, I totally agree with Blake star, the movement, you know, I can't, I can't look at how thin that is. And then the VC Maltese, like right there, this is so pretty. This is a perfect, um, Swiss watch. Like this is as in, as in Stefan, right? Watch, watch, uh, 
uh, Jesus. Um, that's just so beautiful. So I wanted to open up with something really elegant. Um, this is really elegant, totally out of my league. Again, just beautiful, beautiful movement. Um, but uh, I'm, I have a whole bunch of other watches that are, that I shouldn't say a whole bunch. I think I just chose eight total, hoping you guys would chime in, um, that I want to get to. So yeah, absolutely. The movement's beautiful. Uh, the movement definitely, you know, it, 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 the movement could open its own only fans. Like it could definitely do that. Um, give me your top three reasons why I should scrub, subscribe to watch Nicholas. All right. So, uh, uh, first of all, for me, like watching Nicholas, I've interacted with him just a handful of times. Um, he's really affable. He's really personable. He's very funny. He's extremely generous, as as we saw. Um, he has been supporting, you know, my uh, uh, my stuff here uh, since what is this? Is my third formal show or like fourth, like three and a half shows in? So I appreciate that. So by all means, uh, would want to reciprocate that. And he's a friend of uh, the Don Turbion, JJ himself. So. Those would be um, my top three reasons because, from my perspective, um, you know, JJ he uh, he surrounds himself with good people and he ejects people that aren't so good when they need to be ejected. So um, he has a good filtering mechanism. Uh, Jiggity, thank you very much. Basil's bezels, thank you very much. Dollar ninety nine US super chat super sticker. Um, oh, it's a thumbs up. Okay, so super stickers don't render here. Um, so actually, while I have this, I am going to just do a quick pop out here so I can see stuff. Um, I don't know that this is an unfair assessment. I think it is, uh, yeah, humor headlines, crazy comment section. Um, I think that's a... a, a <laughs> decent uh decent assessment of what i've seen i think he does it well um it's definitely it's, it's coherent it is funny there are a cast of characters so by all means you know watch nicholas's channel um watch nicholas live definitely give it a a vote so before we move on uh this stream is sponsored by athletic brew and white if anybody's looking for uh non-alcoholic brews i've been uh experimenting with a whole line of uh, athletic brewing, not NAs. And, uh, this light is a, it reminds me more of a Michelob light than it does a Bud light, but it is a, a good light. Oh, I have trouble in the chat from, uh, Turkey. Uh, welcome for con. Thank you for joining us. And if people, um, recall, we've mentioned it a few times on the channel, the, the earthquake and the situation in Turkey is quite dire. Uh, watch Brando ran a fundraiser. We've run kind of a, a, uh, 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 we've run separate fundraisers with Watch Community. We've been as generous as we can be, but continue. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. Um, so, Emre, uh, good to see you here. Uh, some uh, some friends of mine joining from Turkey. Um, so, yeah, if people want to chime in with what countries they're from, we got the Netherlands, we got the U.S. I know we got Canada, we got the U.K. Um, we have Turkey that we just did. Um, Art Vandalay in, in pure Art Vandalay fashion, right? To home in two countries, Ohio and Florida, which is um, accurate. Texas is another country. We'll let it. We'll let it go. Uh, I am under a contractual obligation um, not to speak about Hebo, so uh, I'm going to skip that one. But uh, uh, I'll leave it as I'll, I'll leave it as is. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Bright Blue Comet is, you know, crew member, really, really good guy. Um, he is actually in his professional circles. He is a high powered figure. I know that he is, uh, uh, he has done what he can as well. Uh, really good guy. Oh, we got Japan representing. So, um, and I will try that. I will look at the Guinness. I actually got the, uh, the athletic brewing, what they call the uh, all out, which is their version. I think it's more of a, uh, it's not as much Guinness as it is. Oh my God. The one that begins with an M that competes on the mainland of Ireland, like the other big one. Not, sorry. The name's escaping me. So let's, uh, let's move on to our next watch kind of getting into the, Oh, we can't do that. This was totally unnecessary for con very much appreciate it. Um, 
50 uh, turkey flares from Furcon. Uh, really do appreciate it, Furcon. Thank you for uh, tuning in. I'm sure that I will pay for this with comments from you and Emre at a, a uh, uh, later day. Um, but I do appreciate it. So moving on to the next watch. This one actually is from a, a Mark. I generally Murphy. Yes. Murphy Tyler Stout. This is correct. Mike is correct. Thank you. And watch a 63 as well. So the all out is more like a Murphy Murphy's Irish Stout. Um, so again, I'm trying the whole athletic brewing line uh, at some point. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll talk about that. So this one here, IWC is a mark that I don't, um, generally spend a lot of time with. This is a unique representation of uh, these particular complications, like the big date, the month, right? It's a um, this is an a perpetual calendar, right? They call it the digital date month, um, and as you can see, like this is again unique representation. Let's see, can I get it zoomed in a little bit more of of this complication? Um, it's a beautiful representation, in my opinion. It's one of the, uh, for me, this is the nicest engineer watch, right? Um, but it's one of the most beautiful representations of, of a perpetual. And I really do like the digital date functions, right? You can see there are layered disks here, which is common in big dates. Um, it has the, you know, being a perpetual has a leap year uh, functions. I do like the pushers, the crown. It's a really nice layout. Um, if we actually, can I scroll through the images here? Again, the lost the, okay. I don't know what's happening. So I can't scroll through it there. Let's try it just this way. <laughs> All right. IWC site does not want to cooperate with me. Um, all right, so I'm going to get some super chats and then come back here and just open those images. Look, Zeppi with the $2 US watch Nicholas is a friend of this community. Um, definitely, uh, definitely agree. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out in a second, Blake, if that's a new in-house movement. And another gener a very generous super chat, uh, 1999 in, I'll still call it the Queen's Pound Sterling, but, you know, now the, the Kings, I guess, formally. Um, went to the VC Boutique in London today and paid for a 56 date with the Blue Dial. Should have it next week. So if we get lucky, the Muhammad Ali will join us for an unboxing one of the shows. That is a congratulations, Muhammad. That is a solid piece. Um, the 56 date is a very, very nice piece. The blue dial is, of course, fashion on blue. It is a good blue dial. Uh, congratulations, by all means. Um, quicker, thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, absolutely. Congratulations, Mohammed. That is a beautiful piece. Uh, please join one of JJ's streams or one of JJ's hosts for that unboxing. So let's go back over here and um, see if we can get this to behave. So it's not going to behave. If I scroll through, they just disappear like after a second. All right. And if I open image in new tab, can I do that successfully and then share this tab? All right, fair enough. So this is the business end. Um, not, it's an IWC, right? Very, very high quality pieces, 68 power, 68 hour power reserve, not as well finished as the VC, but another great example of a fresh calendar. This is still beautiful. I mean, this is still, this is still beautiful. Uh, I do like this particular rotor. It's like almost industrialized. Um, definitely like that. Uh, let's see, get, they had a nice wrist shot in here somewhere. Oh, actually I want to open this one up first because this is, wow. Not being able to navigate the IWC site is kind of frustrating. So let's open this one up next. Um, a nice close up of this particular, yeah, that's just beautiful, right? I do love the way that they do the digital date here. Um, I like the texturing. I like the indices. Uh, you know, it looks like the indices themselves are like a black onyx around the loom. Um, definitely love that. This is, a, you know, a great representation uh, of the IWC. I wonder if they have a loom shot in here somewhere because that would be awesome. Um, ba -ba -ba, let me look. They do not have a loom shot, but... Let's see if we can answer some of those questions. Um, so, oh, that is beefy. 
17.3 mil. So that's even beefy for me. 45 millimeters good for me. 17 mil is probably pushing, uh, pushing my luck. Uh, 12 bar resistance. That's not bad at all. Um, the movement is the 89801 caliber. So that is uh, a licensed movement. IWC manufactures it, but it is a licensed movement. Um, I think that is a JLC licensed movement, but I am not, do not quote me on that. Um, 474 components, 51 joules. Very nice. Uh, this finishing looks. Now, this is not the same gold rotor that they have. Um, in the actual watch pictures, the finishing actually looks a little bit different. Again, not, you know, it's not going to be VC finishing, but it is a, a beautiful, uh, uh, movement. So will not, um, will not criticize that. So now the IWC we have, nobody's chimed in. Well, no, we, here we go. Hold on. Um, I can't, so the master control perpetual is is a beautiful watch i definitely don't disagree with that uh you know patek is not for me i did not actually choose a patek on my list um but uh you know obviously patek has some beautifully complicated watches including like split seconds which is one of my favorite higher end um uh complications definitely you know uh they do it well whole milk yeah you're right date month should be switched from the american market although i don't think um, uh, that's likely to happen, but the IWC was the second watch. Now, since JLC was brought up, I'm going to bring up one of my absolute favorite complicated JLC watches. I had no bloody idea this existed until a few weeks ago. I blame Marco for not telling me it's the master Grand tradition. Um, this is a perpetual, uh, minute repeater on the, <laughs> The dial um, is just gorgeous. Uh, this one is absolutely killer to me. Um, the you know the the minute repeater function, the gong, the this isn't you know what would you call this? It's not a sunburst. What would you actually call this effect? But and then the grid layout effect, the um, astronomy wheel, right? They this is just utterly gorgeous to me. I even like, if you take a look at the uh, hour and uh, minute marker, right, it's textured. I don't know if you can see that. It actually looks almost like a Damascus steel um, that they did there. It's like, looks folded. And then they have the cutouts into the dial. I just love, 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 love the way this watch looks. Um, this, when I think about JLC, you know, this is what I like to think about. Um, they've been struggling in, in, you know, recent years with just earning a mind share. Um, I do like, you know, that you can see the three wheel, uh, year here. I think that's pretty clever. I like the way that they did that. It's tech as well. Just, this is just, this hits all the emotional markers for me in a complicated watch. If you can see, um, you can actually see the raised, uh, uh, applied, numerals and, and dates and days and stuff like that. It's just, just unbelievably um, beautiful watch. The profile shot, uh, you can get an idea. It's uh, This is also a little bit beefy, but you can see the texturing here, which is, this isn't the same as on the um, uh, hands. The hands are definitely like, they look Damascus to me, like a Damascus style, but beautiful. And then the business end of this is, you know, <laughs> That's remarkable, right? That's just flat out remarkable. The finishing is unbelievable on this. Um, uh, you know, this almost, uh, I'm not going to call this coin edge, right? But on the the back of the case, um, that texturing, again, just utterly phenomenal. It's limited to 30 pieces. Um, this is just one of the most beautiful complicated watches out there, in my opinion. Um, it's unobtainable uh, or unobtainium. Um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't disappoint. Right. Um, so 43 mil, it's only 14 mil thick, which if you think about, I mean, we just looked at the IWC, right. Uh, that's not bad. we got five bars again, not bad. White gold. Um, the guilloche enamel, which we were just looking at is 
incredibly beautiful. And then the function list, right? So it's got the moon phase, got the minute repeaters, the perpetual calendar, um, a good frequency, 76 joules, and 585 components. Um, let's see, can I, there we go. This is the movement up close. Gotta love this, right? I mean, JLC just obliterated, um, obliterated this. It's, it's unbelievable. So it looks like a lot of people do like uh, this JLC. Um, absolutely. The, the negative relief, uh, I'm glad you, <laughs> you refer to it properly. I'm an uncultured swine. Um, who said something that was a little, yeah, just wow. Right. Absolutely. You know, love it. Um, it absolutely, absolutely love this. Uh, uh, so this is a question, right? JLC, their capabilities are, um, legend, right? They're referred to as the watchmakers watchmaker. JLC today is having some trouble with their identity. Um, but their special, their ultra complicated reversos. Uh, I really wish they would bring some of those master controls um, back. I think they had some real winners with those. But um, you know, while we're on, uh, oh, we have. Let's see if I do this right. Watch is sixty three. We have a member chat. I hope I didn't miss anybody else's member chat. But let's see if we can get this in there. So watch is sixty three is uh has been a member for 16 months um definitely you know consider membership at the bronze tier and above you get into the whatsapp group so watch the 63 thank you very much for being a long time member you've been there since nearly the beginning um uh we do appreciate it jj certainly does appreciate it and his unpaid intern also also appreciates it so while we're on the topic of jlc there's another jlc i want to pull up and this one's another one that i think is just utterly stunning. So it's also Master Ground Tradition, um, another uh, PAU. Uh, this has, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, so actually, I'm going to start because I can't do it justice. So let's start with the functions. So there's a Zodiac calendar, side rail time, right? You'll, we'll see that in a second. Orbital flying tur turbion. I don't even know what this means. Um, Swiss isn't here to tell us. Uh, this is only 10 millimeter thick. For, for for what you're about to see. It's just another absolutely gorgeous 43 mil, totally wearable. Oh, sorry, the movement sound like four, uh, 13 half millimeter thick, still totally wearable for somebody like me. I couldn't pull it off because I'm a classless lout, but look at this. Look at the hammers on the tourbillon. Look at the hands. I mean, the Zodiac the Zodiac symbols in there, the way that they do the date and the days, the side rail time, like this is, this is amazing, right? Um, Canopy of the Heavens is not wrong. Uh, this is just an absolutely amazing looking complicated watch. Again, another JLC that this is what you want to think about when you think about JLC. Um, this is to a lot of us, like their brand identity. Uh, Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful piece. I mean, just look at even the indices, like the almost nautical or astronomical uh, indices behind the tourbillon itself. It is just, it, it, it is truly stunning. Really, really like this. Um, and then the business end of this is also like just crazy beautiful. Look at that finishing. It is incredibly elegant. Um, the, the, it's incredibly elegant. They've worked in the GLC logo discreetly in a couple places. Uh, it's just another incredibly beautiful watch. Um, this one was limited, I think to 30, no, 28, um, again, unobtainium, but if you could get your hands on this, right, forget the investment as aspect, like this is a watch that, you know, they should bury you with like you go to your grave this should be strapped on your wrist um so yeah actually this was my question right i had not seen um these particular jlc's until fairly recently just a few weeks ago and yeah like 
they're just killing me. Um, Blake brings up a good point, right? Their promotion and marketing uh, has been questionable. I think some of their choices, like I would say the Polaris Perpetual Calendar was probably not the best choice because they discontinued a lot of master controls, but you know, that's my opinion and I don't run JLC. Um, but absolutely do uh, uh, love these watches. Um, so those were two from, from JLC that I absolutely love. Again, please, you know, I'll go through my list, but please chime in if there's something you want me to pull up. But the um, next one I want to pull up is a little wilder. It is from AP. Um, it is a newer release and it is their Royal Oak concept, a uh, split second chronograph, right? With a large date. So this is uh, a Squatch watch, right? This is my sort of watch. Again, AP is also my favorite mark. Um, split seconds. So split seconds is actually of the chrono movement. Split seconds is the one which I think is, it's also apparently almost as hard to implement as like a minute repeater or a turbion. It's a, the complexities of it um, are, okay. Bright Blue Climate made a comment. So we're going to go back because I didn't actually, Aiden, we'll come back to the AP in a second. Um, I didn't actually show you that and I didn't, don't think I saw it. So we are going to go back to the VC, the, the Jujer Le Cool. And apparently there is a loom shot in here somewhere. Um, wait, not. Is it on this page, Bright Blue Comet, or was it on a different page? Screw it. We are going to. Why can't I copy and paste? Okay, I can't copy and paste for some reason. So let's see if we can find it. You'll see. Loom. Oh, here we go. A blog to watch. Um, so we're just going to go over to blog to watch for a moment, which is an excellent resource. <laughs> that is kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. And you get an idea of how the whole Turbion uh, cage plays and moves with this. Oh man. That is kind of crazy, right? Look at that. That is nuts. This is like significant Powerball money. Oh, you're not seeing anything? What happened? Yeah, because I'm an idiot. That's why. That's why you're not seeing anything. I'm an idiot. Um, let's go back up to the straight loom. Look at that. That's crazy. I think I would have a better shot with Powerball getting this than just uh, getting in line and making the money. That's that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. So this is from a blog to watch. Their coverage on this watch. Um, look at that. That's nuts. Look at the depth. This picture is fantastic. Look at the depth of that dial. Son of a gun. All right. We do have our first um, request. So the long and sunny triple split. Um, let's go ahead and pull that up. Uh, and you have a reference number 424-037. Oh, son of a gun, split sec. Look at that. As Longay is apt to do that finishing, that richness of that dial, it does look like the, oh no, that's just the, a concave. So 43 mil, 15, again, totally wearable. Um, price on request. I like the contrast of the two, the split seconds here. 
Oh, we have the boss. The boss has shown up. Hey, I just want to make sure that the register is right and the customers are happy. You're checking, you're checking the till. Yeah, um, man. Oh, man, this long is beautiful. So they have... That's pretty, man. Yeah, this is beautiful. So, what what are we, what are we talking today? I was a little uh, left out in the cold. I wanted to share some complications, some more complicated watches, right? I'm a simple guy. I'm kind of a GMT guy at, at the upper end. But if I wanted to go all the way, like split seconds, perpetuals, tourbillons, I wanted to share some of the ones that caught my eye. Um, so far, I've shared, you know, an IWC, uh, a VC, two JLCs. Um, this and this long gay has been shared to us. Uh, uh, by Mike. Um, while we're there, Mike, thank you very much for sharing this. And while everybody's enjoying that eye candy, uh, your friend Mikey, um, 499 Super Chat listening and having a good stream, I really do appreciate it. Uh, uh, Mike, you have been a friend to me personally, actually. Um, uh, and I really do appreciate it. And I know that JJ and everybody here appreciates your support. Um, Absolutely. So, and I also hate it Mike's drawings, Mike's excellent drawings. Yes, like Mike's illustrations in the WhatsApp channel are fantastic, <laughs> right? And he they they are very informative and, and illustrative. Um, I hate when your boss keeps looking over your shoulder from watching sixty three, <laughs> <laughs> especially if your boss is JJ, because you never know when those uh, size nine or I guess they're size nine and a halfs will come down <laughs> on your shoulder hard. Hey man, I'm just coming on to keep you company. I see you by yourself. If anyone wants to replace me, you're, you're welcome on the panel. I will go about my business. <laughs> yeah, by all means, anybody is. Uh, I will drop the stream art again if people want to jump in. It will look like it is coming from JJ. I'm just going to take advantage of that. Um, but, you know, don't feel obligated either. I am just fine. So that long gay is beautiful. That is kind of crazy. Two different colorways on that. I do prefer the one that the rose gold that... Uh, that you shared there. So I want to go back to that, that Royal Oak though. Um, sure. Now, how, while you're going back to that, I just got a question. How complicated do they have to be? Like, what is there a set amount or just whatever you feel? Like, so I kind of, I consider, so, you know, dates a complication, right? Um, right? I kind of, I'm kind of setting aside standard chronographs mm -hmm. and GMTs, right? Unless they're unusual representations of either of those two things. And I'm going to cover at least one of those, right? Um, Okay. Uh, shortly. I had one in mind as well, but okay. Yeah, dude, by all means, tell me I can pull it up. So this is that new offshore um, concept, split second. This is a beefy watch. Uh, seventeen mil, forty three. Uh, uh, seventeen mil thick, forty three. This was probably not be terribly wearable even for me at seventeen mil thick, but. Yeah, it's it's just a beautiful watch and it is a fantastic representation of um split seconds for me right it's just complete utility the business end of this watch is very utilitarian i do like on these on they have this style rotor on uh the new code ultra complicated as well but this oversized um central axis rotor i do like it this one i think is tungsten probably um but, just to make it extra heavy, right? Yeah, just to make it extra heavy. And the contours almost have a Grubel, like, convex look to them. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, you're, you're, this is an acquired taste, right? Yeah. Uh, I, this is one of those things that I would not consider it <laughs> a watch I would get to, it would, it would match somebody like me, an acquired taste, right? Well, that, that thickness is, uh, you're talking like G-Shock range man territory, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you're not wrong. So this was one of the APs. Um, split seconds to me is actually an interesting and useful complication. It's also extremely difficult to implement, I understand. Uh, but I did like this one. But there is the one that we've talked about, but I have to at least touch on it again, is the new code, um, <laughs> uh, which has bloody everything, right? Um, oh, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This was 23, right? 23 complications? Yeah, I, I bloody well. I, I, I don't even know, right? People arguing like it's a dial of complication. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I remember like a few, someone was saying um, the buckle, the buckle was counted as a complication. Yeah, it's like it's crazy. So if I can get through 
Okay, this is not what I meant. There we go, right? So uh, the new way they do the lunar cycles, I think it's really clever. I'm going to play that video for you. I, it is a very small version of the way like Grubel does their lunar cycles. I think it's pretty clever. Um, uh, I like that, uh, the way it, it snaps in. Um, the fact that it is a minute repeater, and I don't know if the audio will play through, but the fact that it's also a minute repeater with... Um, the case back that can open and and boost the amplification right and it has uh they said it has somewhere in here yeah there we go sapphire crystal membrane acting as a soundboard um so again if the audio <laughs> doesn't work don't worry it'll just go bing bing yeah there you go bing. there you go um oh we have oh, look at this it's higgy in the house we have you know gmt Sir doesn't like when you call him he doesn't like him when you call him higgy you have to call him jonathan GMT. Hey, hello, hey, good Jonathan. evening. Hello, hello, Jonathan. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I am fat and sassy. Well. <laughs> Agreed. Same, same here. How's your night going, Jonathan? Welcome aboard. Oh, it, it's almost bedtime. I just saw my, fr my friend Ali Reza here talking about the new APs, and I thought uh, I'm hopping on. So well, no, the we we are touching on two APs, but we're going to move on to some other watches. We're just talking about complicated watches, yeah. right? Um, so we have a request, right? The new Roy Low Culture Thin Calendar. There's actually, I may even pull up the wrong one, but I did have to at least mention that this code is what brought this topic to the forefront of my mind, um, because it was just a remarkable release from. Uh, from AP, uh, we have. Oh, here we go. We have. Who's JJ's stream? Oh, that's Tan. That's Tanzil. <clears throat> we the got rancher. Tan and the Rancher joining us. Hello, hello. Oh, Tan is back. gone. Bad yeah. internet in Canada. I bad internet. There we go. Yeah, no, there I think go. I think we 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 double clicked on on adding people. So hello, Tan. Hello, Rancher. How are you guys doing? Bad on, boys. Bad. We're in the middle of winter. It is literally, it is literally thirty-five degrees of Fahrenheit. That's how bad it is. <laughs> I live in Florida. So Thirty-three, Clyde. It got to like minus forty Fahrenheit here. There we go. Wow. So here is what the model I believe Blake is referring to: the ultra thin perpetual calendar. Um, yeah, this is this is another beautiful entry. Uh, and it is ridiculously thin, right? Six mil. That is utterly nuts. Um, mm. the... you, have a, you have the voice of a golf announcer. <laughs> he doesn't well, want to disturb. I'll, I'll keep that in mind if I... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll keep that in mind if Top Golf will let me get on their, their mic system. So, yeah, <laughs> this is this is beautiful with, you know, the moon phase. Yeah, um, and, and, and that is... Awesome. That, that is with the JLC movement uh, with uh, the, the extra thin ones. So so that that is gorgeous. Actually, I just picked up a piece just now today. What'd you get? You got, a, you got an unboxing for us? No, actually, I'm not because I want to stay hidden behind my avatar because I'm not as I'm not as pretty as the beige otter. Come on, Cliver, just show us what you got, man. I can tell you what I've got. That's this is you know I can tell you that's just as well. Uh, actually, I've got the Mosher Henry Double Hairspring in white gold. Very nice. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. Curious to see what this looks like. I already put it in the bank. You can literally just pull it up. It's what is it called? The Double Horn Spring? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's covered in stickers. We got somebody on eBay who's posted one here. Um Oh, no, no, no. Speaking of eBay, Clyde, did you see somebody posted your Lyrique on Chrono for 43000 or 45000 Oh, yes, I did. In Singapore, right? Yep. Singapore, yeah. God bless you. God bless you, man. Where did you, where did you pick this one up, Ranger? It was a swap. I made a trade. But I like it. But the amazing part is, is that... Uh, the wi the sm the winding is almost as smooth as the Lyrique, which is impressive. But that uh, that can be nice, but there is no excuse for that uh, for that weird case shape and and that boring dial. Don't you agree with that? 
That K shape reminds me of uh, what's the VC that's shaped like that? Um, or actually, the Kelp, the Parmigiani Kelpa. The Kelpa, yeah, the, the, the yeah, yeah, this version yeah, of the yes. Tonneau. I actually like this K shape. I can't make it work really? for me, but it always catches my eye. Yeah. Um, as as Marco likes to say, the inky numerals there, I like that. That's I don't know. I think this is a pretty watch, right? Um, and like 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 a lot of, like some other Mosiers, it also has the power reserve, but in the back because it doesn't want to uh, it doesn't want to keep mess up the dial, keep the symmetry. Yeah. Sorry, guys, you're alone with your love, love for that case <laughs> shit and that. Uh... I'm not sure. No, I, I like it. I don't know that I love it. Right, I like it. I admire it when. And the Kalp is actually a really good example. I really do like Parmigiani's um, iteration of that Tano shape. Billy Piccolo oh. with another super chat, a dollar ninety nine. Great job so far, guys. Appreciate it. Um, now, my the... Kalp is also the Ebna Madeira. It's the manual eight day, eight day uh, manual wine. I actually like this comment from Blake Star. This watch reminds me of Mad Men. I totally agree, and I can't remember who uh, Don Except Draper's um, friend was, who also played Tony Stark's dad. I can't remember the guy's name, character name, or yeah. or the actor. Roger R Sterling, Sterling, Roger Sterling. Right? Um, this, this totally looks like a Roger Sterling. This to me reminds me of the Vacheron, the Malta tunnel shape. You know that one? Except the the lugs don't flare out. Yeah, with, without the ugly lugs, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, those weird looking. Logos. I do. Congratulations, congratulations, Ranger. Oh, thanks. I like this watch. And actually, this this watch is so complex, Mosher can't make it anymore. The MSRP was twenty eight thousand dollars, and they can't afford to make it because they're not selling it. They got no, priced out of their market because it was too expensive. Literally, it's double hair springs. It was too too expensive. Hey, Clyde, did you get that? Clyde, did you get that local, or did you go to Dallas? You know, I have not been to Dallas in the longest time. It was a swap. I'll put it that way. Okay, but it was like local to where you're at. No, it was not. Okay. Friend to friend. Yes. Hope bro to hope bro. It is nice. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. That is nice. Jonathan, so you've been on 10 minutes and you haven't brought up a complicated longer yet. I'm waiting. Well, uh, I was lured in by a complicated lange, but then you you moved over to to other watches. So what can I do? <laughs> let's let's see if I can actually. Um, but lure but full that. disclosure, this is by, past my bedtime, so I'll be off very soon. I I just thought that that I'm giving you a little bit company, but now that the panel is full, uh, my time is over, and um, I'm going. Yeah, but you're, mm -hmm. it's it's your company special, man. Yeah, but guys, if you ask us a question now. You can get a five panel test. <laughs> so which, which some of us probably will not pass. <laughs> I was going to pull up another one. I full disclosure. I think this is an ugly watch, but there are two things about it in particular. I think are really interesting. <laughs> so this is the traditional twin beat perpetual calendar from Vacheron. Um, it has the ability to be high frequency mm. or yeah drop back to preserve the power reserve. I thought that mm. was interesting. I, I do, I'm do. i not aware of any other um, high horology watch that has that ability. I'm sure that Ranger, actually Ranger Tan and uh, Jonathan probably are aware of other ones. Um, I really admire this watch for the just raw capabilities. And VC does have some absolutely beautiful high complication watches. So, Sorry. so if I if I was sarcastic, I would say you know you, you need this kind of function uh, because your perpetual calendar is so difficult to uh, to set uh, that you have to to make sure that it's running all the time, even though you you leave it uh, somewhere in your desk. Uh, but uh, I I think that they they made it more. Uh, like a technical flex, and and to be honest, that is the only uh, watch uh, with this kind of complication that I'm aware of. I think nobody else uh, did that before. Yeah, and I think that's a hell of a flex, a 65-day extended yeah. power reserve, yeah. right? And for a perpetual calendar, that's brilliant. Well, if I was sarcastic, I'd say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think they have any other 
yeah, I was actually kind of astonished. No, it's it's a super cool complication, and actually, I like the the way the the watch looks. So, and, and the movement is it's uh, beyond any any question. And you, and you see the double balance uh, uh, wheels, uh, one for the slow frequency and one for the fast. Yeah, yeah, beautifully yeah. done. Higgins, could you do you think you can give Doctor BBW his iPhone back and get your own? Higgins, we're getting um, a little bit of a uh, uh, static from you. It's cracking up. Oh, talking. really? Yeah. Uh, I I'm afraid I can't change that because I'm on my iPad and I'm right. trying to throw the cat out because the cat is going mad here at the moment. So so is, is it now better? Is that a euphemism? No, no, that uh, that is true. Mrs. Higgins is safe for the moment. Gotcha. <laughs> Tan, what do you think of this watch, man? Have you seen this one before? I, look, I think that the power reserve is very interesting because on a perpetual calendar, right? That's always the worry is like, well, if it stops, then you know, obviously resetting it's a pain in the ass. So a lot of folks either keep them on winders, but you know, a power reserve of that long, right? Like it makes absolute sense. So I think that's actually extremely interesting um, to me because yeah that's always my worry with you know perpetual calendar annual calendar is like it's they're great complications but like you really either have to use them all the time or keep them on winders right yeah i think i think it's a brilliant well, idea um marvin the toothless bear Martian, right what's the price on it's again price on request i didn't to be honest with you i very intentionally didn't look up the prices because I'm, i mean almost all the watches were pulling up here on obtainium right so i was less interested i do know that like the jlc's that were priced on request were the 130 and the 260 range um i think so that one is around 100. Yeah, so but, I was say, safe okay. to say six figures right six figures is always a safe to say yeah yeah, yeah. let's see vintage, if this vintage car, car question, vintage car question if i may car question mid set yeah car question involving dotson later known as nissan 260 or 260 z or 280 z 260z why the 260 it's for me it's purely sentimental value okay. apply didn't they have a 240 as well was that the fair lady was they did. yep and that was 240. the original one that was that's actually iconic 240 what's is, the two the, the 240 was a four banger wasn't it yes and the 260 was a six banger care to guess what was in the 280 an eight six banger. banger. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I'm just trying to looking at a couple of things right now. Just <clears throat> so this watch, eleven oh five, uh did the, the work. Uh three hundred and sixty five thousand for this VC, so that's a little bit more painful than I even expected. Hmm. Um what do you guys uh, think about oh I'm sorry, good. Go go for mean? it, man. No, I, I do you uh, uh finish with it but again we'll keep going with this and then i'll throw out one answer no throw it out man let's throw it out now i was gonna ask what do you guys think of uh the 5930p uh the, the world time chronograph technically 5930p with the green dial in particular i know um i think marco was unboxing uh a, a bunch of stuff with roman they had one in i just saw hmm. them doing a video on it yesterday uh uh, the photos, I don't really love like the renderings and, and stuff, but like when he had it in person, a video, it looked, it didn't look as green and like crazy. I thought it was kind of interesting. All right, let's just go straight to the photos. Um, that definitely looks better because the renderings make it look like I want to hit it off of a tee. Like you want to find your lucky charms? <laughs> That's definitely better. That's pretty. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was interesting. It makes it a little more sporty than that regular world time. I feel like the regular, like the 5130, uh, 5230, I feel like, or the 5110, I feel like they're really nice, but they're a bit stuffy. Uh, I like the pushers on this. I always like the squared off pushers. I feel like it makes it a little more sporty, but still keeps that world time co uh, complication. I don't know. I like it. So it has yet to say three, no, two independently moving inner dials. That's nice. Or maybe three, actually. I think two. That is nice, though. God, let's see if there's another. Oh, let's see. I think I like. No, I like the green. Ah, that's weird for me to like the green better than the red. Didn't they have a blue one? It looks like they do. I believe blue they and do. platinum or something. Uh, the green is platinum. I think the blue is white gold. Okay, then it's vice versa. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. What so Tan Rancher? 
Higgins, what do you guys think? I'm I'm on the record of not liking green dials, so I'm I'm all for blue. The only thing I don't like about the blue is the outer ring is also blue. I feel like they should have left it white, like they did in the uh, in the platinum. And just left the center blue. My response is. Not I'm not a huge Patek guy. I do what I think this is aesthetically very pleasing now. I like the guilloche, um, the contrast against the the subdial movements, and then the business end of Pateks are always pretty. Gentlemen, Rancher, give us a contrast. <laughs> Gentlemen, today it's uh, it's last time I was having McDonald's on the stream. Today it's uh, Tim Hortons coffee. For those who don't Canadian coffee. <clears throat> Very nice. Hey, Tan, we got your buddy e, uh, E11 even 05 in the house saying the 5231J is the world time of all world times. Tanzil, help me out here. That's the, uh, is that the cloisonne dial? Yeah, yeah. The, what, what Be careful that? what you say, Tanzil. You the were Khaleesi, saying positive things in Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny because uh, that, you know, that is um, definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Nico has this watch. Yeah, look, Higgins, I'm I'm also the of the mindset of that hour hand. Just it fikes me off a bit. To be totally honest with you, I would have preferred if they used it on like you know the fifty two thirty hour hands. How about the the outlines on that cross? In oh, you mean what? You mean the observatory they, hand? We got sod in the so house. We got sod in the house. What's up, sod? Oh, this is great. Watch sixty three says, "Why have you mentioned world time? You know what is going to happen." No, Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan's going. Kneel to before sod. Kneel before sod. Hello, Jonathan. hello to all the billionaires and Jonathan. <laughs> uh, if only, if only it were so. Yeah, look, the city, the the city ring, um, Jonathan is not. It's very basic. Like honestly, every single one of them is is like this. So it's it's a bit to me. You're right. Like I think it takes away from its and how special it is. Um, they they could have done a better job. I agree. That's still a damn pretty yeah. watch. So I'm actually going to go full circle back to what I said was the complication that is for for me, which is um, GMT, but a unique representation of the GMT. I think. Mm currently probably the most clever representation of the GMT complication, which is the Grubel. Um, so let me make sure that actually showed out right. So in particular, right, the uh, convex series is absolutely gorgeous. They have the convex double balance, but I think this is a gorgeous representation of GMT. I think it's clever. It's artsy. It's beefy. Fit my wrist. Really love what Grubel did with this, this watch. Um, Ali, can I ask yeah. you what you what your thoughts are of the Beauvais Recital Twenty Two? Let's look it up. Let me go pull that up. <clears throat> I think I've asked I've asked JJ about this a couple of times. Show me the Beauvais. Beauvais. Let's yeah, it's, see. Uh, it's the globe. Show it's me the globe. Beauvais. You can type globe. You can even type globe on it. Wait, no. This is definitely not where I'm at. Yeah, just go, like so recital twenty two globe. Just like globe. And then you should get it. That's the one. All right. Um hmm. I haven't seen it before, so this is the first time I'm seeing it. Interesting, but it's definitely not done with the same uh skill set as the Grubel. The Grubel it was light years ahead of this in my eyes. This is giving me what? unfortunately, What's so I like Beauvais. In general, I like Beauvais. Unfortunately, this is giving me straight off the bat Jacob and Co. vibes. <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> this might be really useful for 2023 because later on this year, you'll be able to actively look down and actually track how Russia and the U.S. are launching their missiles at each other. <laughs> or, spy, or, or spy balloons, Clyde. Or spy balloons. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Tan. This is a miss for me. Hey, man, it's, a be it's beefy. It'll be nice on your wrist. Beefy. Beefy. And they make beefy. various uh, <clears throat> variations of this particular watch, and uh, they, they have a lot of beautiful micro-paintings uh, for, for the globe. Particularly the loom on, on 
want this one. It's really nice. This is nice, but I don't know. I don't think I don't think it comes anywhere close to the Google. Yeah, yeah, I'm I agree. What before say is king. John, Higgins, what, what, was the Hermes, what was the Hermes World Time that won the GPHD award this year? It's called like Arso of something. Arso, uh, yes, something with Arso, yes. Arso <laughs> mio. We got okay, John, young I, Brando I, in the house. Quick, do us a favor and say, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Who, who did you ask to say that? Jonathan. No. Why would I do that? Because it <laughs> actually sounds like the... There he is. Check out the young Brando uh, watches yeah, and the style Brando channel, guys. Make sure you sub up. He has a, uh, a show he does a few nights a week. Uh, it's fairly late Eastern time. Um, lots of history. Uh, I can mm -hmm. comfortably say that he... Nice he week. Uh, oh, was that me? That was, no. that was me. That was me. Yeah, I can comfortably say that this is where I have learned about a ton of different watches. Like, I just didn't know existed, especially when he covers vintage stuff. So definitely go uh, check him out. Thank you, young Brando, for dropping by. Um, whole milk. So we do like audience participation. Mm. Uh the Ulysses Nardan Telerium. I don't know if I've seen that watch either. So let's pull that up. I think it's called Tellurium with a new. Oh, Tellurium? by the way. Go ahead. Son. Yeah, yeah, go for it, JJ. I'm pulling this up. I was, I was going to say, while you're pulling this up, what do you guys think is a fair price to pay for the white VC strap, the overseas rubber strap? Hmm. <clears throat> I've seen I the strap. It's actually really nice. Are you sure yeah. you want a white strap, though, bro? Like, I'm going to get dirty. Well, I figure for the summer it'll be cool. I mean, I don't really get that dirty, to be honest. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't I know. Mean, like, I mean, it, Ali, it could... I'm picturing a guy who lives in Brooklyn <laughs> eating like pizzas, going to the laundromat, like having a good time. Right? <laughs> Can't take my change out of the laundromat. You, you never. So he everywhere he goes, he's got like two or three, you know, folded. Uh, pocket squares, right? He just pulls out the Hermes pocket square. He pulls out the Goyer pocket square. He gets some nice, like, bibs, like three <laughs> bibs going across. So those get dirty, but nothing else does. Not the, nothing else. So this this particular watch, the, the Tellurium, I, uh, I don't bother, or I have never bothered to, to understand all the complications. It shows uh, the, the Equinox and, and stuff like that. What I like is here that you can see that, uh, that little bent wire uh, that goes through the middle. Uh, that shows, I think... Um, uh, the the path of uh, of the sun or of the moon and that wire is being bent over the year so the yeah. curve is changed interesting yeah i didn't i uh, i again i've never seen this watch he says what was it russell 996 has this watch it's yeah definitely yeah. pretty um we have two other crowd calls out so i'm gonna pull this one up this is so jacob and co which i just shit on jacob co a second ago right um the the this astro astronomia is okay by me right the rolling cage the texturing it's okay by me but some of their other stuff is just utterly ridiculously hideous well, what would you rather have in your collection an astronomia or a necronomicon <laughs> it depends on uh, my particular. Actually, it depends on the apocalypse. Okay. And how close you how close you look to a forest? There was <laughs> no ranger. Okay. Um, the the all right. So let me go. And there was another call out. This is Latemps. Is this a watch? I have no I think, idea. I think that out. is the Hermes the Tonk uh, hmm. Voyager. Hmm. The triple axis, Germany, Italy, Japan. Yeah, yeah, checks out. <laughs> Let's see. Our soul, le temps voyageur. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have seen this before. Um, I've been looking more at their their rectangle shape, like their H O eight and stuff like that. Yeah, I like this. This is a pretty watch. I think our men is it's... doing some great stuff. I think it might have an Agenhor uh, Agenhor uh, movement in it too. Well, here's I'm the thing: out. everyone's really like commenting on the lugs on this piece. I think even Jonathan did. Wasn't a big fan of them. No. I Because the lugs look like they're going to break. Like, for me, that it, it would worry me that they were going to break. But I don't... Aesthetically, they're thicker than the other wire lugs I've seen for some other makers. Yeah, they... 
they're different and uh, that that top luck is is just not not a luck and i can't get over it other than that the, this uh, the world timer is really good uh, so that little dial moves uh, depending yeah. on what what your local time is so yeah i, I love the depth on this i love what that. i didn't like is that basically the same watch won two prizes uh, just uh, because they they wanted to uh, to appease to Hermes a little bit. Um, Grenade module on Vosher movement. Thank you, young Brando. Oh, and I just learned where else the Vosher movement was used from young Brando's channel like three nights ago, I think. Um, so we actually had another call out, uh, First. Chris Ward Belcanto. You know who, um, you know, it's Vosher, right? The Belcanto. It's called Vosche, by the way. Okay. Vosche. Uh, are, are these on NATO straps also? I'm thinking yeah. Vaz, I'm thinking Vaz, <laughs> don't, don't. I think Vaz is going to educate us on some Parmesani Clarier or something. No, that's yes. exactly what that's to their own. There you go, Clyde. Yeah. I knew the answer. No Bobby Google here. Only my Tim Morton's coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm off to bed. Thank you very much for having me on. You have a great show, uh, show Ali Reza. Yeah, uh, All the Higgins, best. Thank Higgins, you very much for doing Higgins, that. Higgins, yeah? Higgins, before you go. Yes, yes. Good Abend. Good Abend. Good enough. <laughs> bye bye. Eschloch, uh, Eschloch. I might mock. Oh, wait, too late. Sorry. So, thank you very much, Higgins, for joining us. Have a good night's rest. So, JJ, this call out is specifically for you. They want to get your feelings on the Bel Canto. I do know for people who are members um, in the archives, maybe seven episodes, eight episodes again. JJ actually covered this watch. Um, mm -hmm. For those who are members, while I'm saying that, please upvote, subscribe, uh, JJ, and we really appreciate it. But JJ, take it away, man. What's your thoughts on the Balcanto? Look, I know we, we kind of tease the watch and make fun of, you know, Christian Ward and all that stuff. But honestly, it's pretty cool what they did, right? For, I guess, you would still, would you still consider them a micro brand? Um, making one of the most, like, affordable, like, uh, chime watches, that's Swiss made, you know, I mean, you're getting this for under four grand. Um, I, I like the design. I like the blue dial, the Azure blue, whatever they use. It's very, uh, very modern looking. Definitely remind, has like some MBNF inspiration to it. Uh, cool watch. I mean, they sold out really quick. Would they make like 300 of these? Um, I personally don't think I would spend 4,000 on a Chris, Christopher Ward, but that's my own problem. If you enjoy the brand. Why not go for something cool? I mean, obviously it was a hit. It sold out. You know, I think what they sold these sold out pretty much instantly. I know the second run. Sold yeah, out it was it was it well. was pretty much instant. Anything, I think that, anything that captures any sort of attention in this day and age will sell it instantly if it captures just a whiff. That's just well, this is just twenty twenty three or this is there, the internet page. There is a good there's a good aspect to that though when it comes to this from Christopher Ward. If they executed this right, which we'll find out over the next course of the next six months to eighteen months. They did introduce something at an extremely, extraordinarily competitive price point, right? Yeah. Um, and I will welcome their second iteration if these hold if these hold up. Absolutely. Oh, we have Swiss in the house. Swiss miss. We opened with a Swiss watch. Swiss, and you missed it. Hello, um, Swiss. Any so anybody else in the Belcanto before I actually go flash the Swiss watch up real quick? Yes, yes. My one question: Does it come on a NATO strap? <laughs> those are the, I think those are the Christian wards, not the Christian. Mm, mm, mm. I think it's a sign of good things to come. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think I, I'm interested in in watchmakers going out like way out on a limb. Um, and this one isn't so far off the aesthetic path that it's just horrendous. Uh, I am interested to see see where. Um where Christian Ward goes with this. So since it's we have Swiss though, right? Very futuristic looking. They use titanium, grade five titanium, you know, they, I do think it's pretty. Really I do think it's boundary. pretty. Right. And I don't think the finishing is is off, at least, you know, in the pictures we see. I what mm -hmm. I'm curious mm -hmm. is is to see if they last out 18 months, right? Because we don't know. There's a chance. And it's it's uh uh if it falters out like fairly soon, if there's a lot of service issues, then I don't know that they're gonna get another chance at this. Well, I think one um, smart move they made was modifying the Salida movement instead of trying to go in house, and you know that saved them some money there and give them some reliability. 
Yeah, I, I always think that any brand that uh, starts with a, a good editor or Salida is just fine. I'm not a movement mm. snob when it comes to experimentation or new aesthetics. There are a lot of beautiful watches that are based on an, an editor or Salida. But for mm. a second, this is for a personal thing. I have to pull up the watch that I referred to as specifically the Swiss, Swiss watch earlier. I'm going to pull this up again. This was the first complicated watch we looked at. This, to me, just screams Stefan. So... Since Stefan's in the house, I have to pull that back up. Um, let me see. Huh. If I... Eight o'clock watch. Eight o'clock small seconds. Uh, but did I miss anybody's up here? I don't think I missed anybody else's up here. Well, do you like it? Do you like it at that position between seven and eight, or eight? And I like it more between eight and nine. Obviously, eight I nine. think eight thirty is the clearly clearly superior position. But then again, I it. And this is a Vacheron, which I think is unjustly underrated compared to uh, compared to Calatrava. Minor differences at most. I think, I, think. Sw I think Swiss's white gold one, where the center seconds is actually at six, mm -hmm. is better than this one. Yeah, but that's, but again, for complicated watches, I opened with this one because this is the one I would love to see on Swiss's wrist. Like in terms of complicated watches, I think this is just gorgeous, super elegant. Yep. Um, Thank you, the watch boy. Absolutely, please upvote. That's that way JJ's unpaid interns get to continue to relax. Um, oh, Swiss apparently is uh, drooling. He's drooling. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm glad you could see that because I wasn't sure if he was drooling, no. vomiting. I really couldn't mm. tell. No, um, on this, on a design like this, though, would you rather just not have a small seconds and just have it is? Uh, see, I'd almost rather have. How big is this, Ali? Because I think Swiss's is 38. So is this that much bigger? I think this one's a 43. It's incredibly Ooh. thin, but it's a 43. Wow. Ooh. It's a That's bit a big five. for a 41. 41. Okay. ML thick, though. 41. It's um, a dinner plate for Swiss. But, I mean, it just it it just screams elegance. This just screams elegance. It screams culture and sophistication and shit. Swiss. Yeah, there we go. So, um... All right. Do we have any other call outs? We don't. So I did want to bring this one back up. We were on, we've covered, oh. I don't know, we've covered some Pateks. We've covered some, uh, uh, we were on the Christopher Ward. And then I had one more I wanted to bring up. Now, can it also scream subtly? We ha can it scream subtly. Um, it depends if the, if mom and dad are in the bedroom next door. Um, the Brigade or Amandu. Okay. Yeah. We got to pull that up. <laughs> Sorry, mom, or actually, sorry, my daughter, if she you'll watch this later. I shouldn't have said that. Oops. Um, Edit it out. Right. So there are a couple of references of this one, Swiss. I don't know which one in particular. I'm going to pull this one up because it. I think the dial looks interesting right off the bat. No, I made a mistake. The dial does not look <laughs> like I expected it right off the bat. Um, if there's a particular reference... Uh, so let's let me know. So Ali, is this a sub? Is this a sub variant of the Marine? Because that, that one, one look like will look like a Marine before. Yeah, that one was. This is uh, oh. this is the cl classic cl cl classic version. Uh, I do like this. It actually reminds me a little bit of some of the Master series. Um, the JLC discontinued that I don't think they ever should have discontinued. I do like this. Ted, remember when you were doing the show with all the world timers, and I picked the Horror Monday. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Did you do like this watch? The this whole time. Uh, Ali guess? says. Uh, Ali, he says five 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 seven for gay. What's happening? Mm. Oh yeah, there's a fifty seven seventeen, and then the five 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 seven. But he was five, yeah, five, the one I pulled up. No, yeah, dude. That's the Marine. Uh, like yeah, that's Marine. the Marine. I do not like this. <laughs> I don't like this one. Yeah, I like Ali, one. what don't you like about it? Like, well, what, do you just not like the aesthetic of the Marine at all? Or like, what don't you like? I don't actually. So that's actually oh. true. I don't like the aesthetic of the Marine at all. Um, and the dial betrays the strap system. Like, I, I, I don't know. It feels like an industrial module and not an elegant watch. I also really don't like these bloody indices. What the Swiss hell? Swiss got it wrong, Ali. He says 3,700 reference. Okay. All right. I think Ali was questioning whether Swiss called this classic style or not with the Marine. Um, so that is a vintage. 
It's a pre-map. There's, no, there's just like a globe gear shape kind of on it. Yeah, there goes again. Oh, that's elegant. Yeah, that's classic. That's classic. Oh, that's elegant. I like the crown. Look at that brigade. Hmm. Ali, thoughts on crown guard on this piece? Does it need crown guards? <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> that if you're wearing a watch that's complicated that crown guards are a utility. It's a very ornate crown in its defense, right? I mean, it just kind of... And they're thinking out wild well, crown guards aesthetically would look kind of funny. That's the thing, of... right? So in the in the two thousands, Patek Philippe yeah. was doing crown guards on the Calatrava, and they did it on the the five one one zero World Time. So I don't know if this is from that same era, of if the watchmakers mm. were all doing it. Yeah, I have to excuse well, me. I have, a lot of... to... I have to go pick up my car. Oh, right. Right. Congratulations on your Moser, man. Be well. Yeah, I'm happy. So I'm you know going to hop in the MR two with the new struts and shocks and just see if I can wear them out all over again. See you guys. Oh, God, I love that thing. So fucking much. Bye. This is a pretty watch, Swiss. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. But I, I, like I think that's kind of why the crown guards are there, right? Because all the operations through the crown, so you do want to give it some protection, I guess. It would stick out, like, extremely far. Like, it just aesthetically looking, too, it would look kind of funny. Swiss, this is right up your alley, too. 38 mil. 10k gray market, yeah, that's. Uh, you think you get this 10? Probably a little more than that. I would say probably closer to 15, but yeah, maybe. Still beautiful watch. I prefer the newer ones. I like I like the, uh, the 5717. I like the uh, I like to see like the the ocean marks and everything, you know, the water marks. I do I do like the those. World timer dials where they have like the depth of the ocean, the color, uh, the color gradients. Mm -hmm. Um, this is yeah, Carpet Beetle Jack's not wrong. This definitely feels like old money. Um, so I hear verb pipe playing. What was the verb pipe song? Bittersweet Symphony. I hear that song yeah, yeah. playing. <laughs> and I had one more mm -hmm. that I was going to throw up. Um, and you may mm -hmm. see this unboxed fairly soon. It's as I said, like. I like higher complications or really unique representations of traditional complications, and I like how what Singer does with the chronos. Oh, I just want to let you know. I don't know if you said you said you had to go a certain time. No. Yeah, yeah, I got I got about ten minutes left before I got a I got a plug out. JJ, um, are you linking? Are you linking out at six? I have to go down to my uh, office if, to do that. Uh, I can go do that while Ali shows this. Sure. So, yeah, this was the last watch I kind of wanted to highlight were the track ones from Singer. Um, a very unique chrono. Uh, they have a number of different iterations. And again, you may see an unboxing of one of these on JJ's Watch Hangout here fairly soon. Uh, in particular, I like the flamboyant edition, but these skeleton editions are pretty freaking hot as well. So, um, since we are coming up on like the last nine, 10 minutes, I want to make sure anybody has any other call outs. Uh, all right, we have a question. Um, thoughts on the 41 date just Wimbledon on Jubilee or Oyster as an investment? Since I don't believe in watches as investments at all, I'm not the right person to answer this question. I'm going to let uh, Tan chime in. JJ will certainly be able to chime yeah, in as well when he gets back. I'd say of all, I'd say of all of the date just, this is probably one of the higher value retention date just you can get you know with the Wimbledon obviously you know other folks like the uh, zero blue with the Romans as well so you know date just wise this is a good choice um but I agree with Ali like you know watches really shouldn't like it hindsight's twenty twenty, and what we've seen has been good investments but you know really predicting the market or predicting the future is, is a really tough thing to do and you know I I probably I probably would say it's not an investment or any date just is, is an investment right now I, I don't think so so but of all the date just for investment potential, this is probably one of the few that could have it. Yeah, and I'm just not the right guy to ask about this. I, I recoil at the idea of watches as investments. Um, the uh, but hopefully, uh, Gooser Tan is significantly has more depth in, on this topic than I do. So by all means, I would uh, take his advice as, as near gospel. Um, the yes. The singers are uh, uh, 43, um, 
to 45, depending on which of the flyback chronos. Um, they are bigger watches. They are squash sized watches. Um, yeah, so absolutely. So it, it will hold its value. Like, I can tell you that. Like, I, I agree. It will hold its value. Um, I went away for two minutes. Now we're talking about Rolex again? Yeah, so the question, <laughs> there was a question from the just panel, kidding. right? Um, yeah, just joking. I see it. If it as an investment, right? Tan chimed in. Please chime in. No so, investment. Do you guys take no, good investment? Not, he's just asking if it's going to hold value, which I think it probably will. Um, it, the Wimbledon mm -hmm. is of of all the date, just you know variations. It, it is definitely you know, people do like it, right? So you know, it's not like it's an undesirable date just in some weird dial that no one would probably. He'd probably have to sell it at a discount. I think. I think he'd be all right. Yeah, I, th I think you'd be all right. You're not going to lose. You're not going to lose on it. Um, so, all right. Anybody else have any other call outs before we go to the <laughs> peanut gallery? Mm, no, I think we hit it all. I think we did well. All right. So then I am quite actually. A few amount, uh, quite a few watches you got through, you know? So you will have to excuse me. I, I generally would like to try to go about two hours. Um, JJ, I can leave you if you're going to. I think you're going to link to another show. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could shut it down, no problem. So, but because it pleases me before I go, and I do appreciate everybody joining, upvoting, watching. There were some super chats. I appreciate my friends and uh, colleagues from Turkey again. Um, Grace, watch after you guys. Uh, I do need to play one commercial break while I'm here because it just brings me joy. And then I will depart and hand it over to the Don. Come on, get it, come on. Get it! You won't regret it in 2023 at Tim Talks Like Bob! Roman? Roman! Did you see that? <laughs> oh my god, those two things make me laugh. So I'm going to hand it over to the Don and Turbion. Everybody, thank you very much. And wear your watches. I will see you guys later. Later, yeah. Ali. Thank you again. Appreciate the help. Don't nuke the stream. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> just leaving the stream. <laughs> yeah, don't nuke the stream. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gents. There you go. That was Ali giving us a nice stream today. Nice stream. I've been on the road most of the day, but I'm glad I got to hop on towards the end. I'll let it run another uh, few until Arch hops on. So what's the word, Tan? What are you driving home? Uh, I got the three series, and there's a shitload of traffic. So I thought I'd get a coffee, pull over, talk to you guys, see what you guys are up to. Oh, nice, nice. I thought we were keeping your company on your drive home. You ever see GMT loves to do that, you know? Yeah, I always worry that the sound is going to be not very good if it's if I'm on a highway or something, right? So. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. I got a new pickup today. Not one that's going to be very exciting, but. Uh, What'd you get? Let's see if I could. Just a little uh, G Shock, a little G Shock action. All right. I, need, I wanted something. Um, actually, I'll take it off. I wanted something to like, really run, run around with. Uh, and not really use the Pelagos for something a little more hardcore. So uh, I got this here. I, I was so, my uh, my grandfather used to wear a G Shock before he passed away, and um, he passed away actually wearing the the G Shock. So when we were kind of splitting up the estate and stuff, like you know nobody wanted like none of my you know none of his grandchildren wanted the the watch, so I I kept it. But it's similar to that one. Oh yeah, the sixty nine hundred. Oh, before that was the sixty six hundred. So probably sixty six hundred. Yeah, it's an older one. Yeah, this one is the. Um, yeah, the, those actually are really good. They last um, a really long time. I know. Uh, if you ever saw um, Jory Goodman, the Time Teller Channel on YouTube. Yeah, I know Jory very well. Right. Um, he uh, he has a sixty six hundred, and he said he hasn't changed the battery in like twenty years on his. Uh, you know, because it's the the solar battery. So yep. this one, like the DW6900, was pretty popular. I think uh, Tom Cruise wore it in Mission Impossible when he's on the motorbike. I forgot which which uh, which movie it is exactly, but the one when, uh, when he's on the motorcycle on the cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has this watch on. But this is the, not the DW. This is the GW6900, okay. which I think is slightly thinner. But uh, the main thing is it has the tough solar in it, and um, it has the multiband, uh, you know, to pick up the atomic time. So yeah. that was pretty cool. I mean, you know, for for under a hundred bucks, you can't can't really go can't wrong. Go wrong, man. Can't go wrong. That's yeah, I think it was like eighty five dollars, something like that. You know, I can't even find fifty thousand dollar watches around, man. Let alone hundred dollar <laughs> watches. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm dying here. I got even got the bear going looking for me for some complicated paddocks around Canada. It's just not happening, man. What about E11? We're gonna get a trade going. 11:05 is you know he's I've already let him know he he knows that you know if he's willing to if he's looking to sell his 52.12 at any point to let me know because he is in Canada so it'd be an easy easy peasy deal for me. <laughs> Curly's making fun of me. He says perfect watch to carry tailpipes. He's making fun of when I wore my Paul Newman Daytona and scratched the. Uh, Scratch the you, you're carrying tailpipes wearing your like gold Daytona. <laughs> yes. I, well, I, in my defense, I didn't know I was going to be. I was wearing the watch, and I was out. And a friend of mine called me and he said, "Hey, uh, are you around? I, I got because uh, I'm rebuilding an uh, an old Mustang." Yeah, yeah. And he had the uh, one part. I was changing the rear bumper for the Cobra bumper, which sticks up a little higher. Yeah. So a lot of guys use the LX tailpipes when they run a new exhaust because they're cut on like the 45 degree angle and they run perfect out of those, the Cobra rear bumper. Anyway, he had like a brand new set. He was cleaning out, uh, he had a storage garage with all Mustang parts because he used to sell parts, but he's yes. getting married. So he sold like all his cars, all the parts. He's just getting rid of everything. And uh, he called me. He's like, hey, do you want them? Come pick them up. You could have them. So I was like, all right, I'll take them. It was like a free 300 bucks. <laughs> so <laughs> Scratch uh, you. So I went and picked it up and I was like, I'll be very careful. You know, I should have just took it off, but I had one in each hand and like one swung around a little bit and it just Ooh. like, it didn't like make a deep scratch. It was just like a little smudge mark, but it's annoying. Everyone talks about these are the, the great memories, JJ. I don't know if that's yeah. a great memory or not. <laughs> no. Like I, I'm, just, I'm just curious to like what great memories that people have banging their watch into a desk or something. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I, I look. I don't care about scratches, but it's funny when people talk about memories. You know, it's like hmm. they can they can laugh and think about the time they bumped into a desk. You know, like yeah, like, like well, unless the memories I got like attacked by four like beautiful women and I fell into a desk while uh, you literally. Know. Like, I've been thinking about like what memories are there that you can talk about that you got the scratch from? Like I don't know. So what is he talking about? He says, JJ, you need a just in case watch case. Just in case, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Those little, yeah, but those don't work on the Oyster Flex. You know the the Rolex cases, like the little velvet bags with the with the thing. Yeah. You can't, but you can't put a, you can't put a, a Oyster Flex in those. Young Brando's got a good question for you. If you found three hundred dollars on the ground, would you pick it up and scratch your gold Daytona? Uh, probably not. No. <laughs> probably no. not. I was trolling Higgins earlier about his Daytona, how he like keeps it in the safe. It still has all the stickers, and I'm like, I'm like, come on, Jonathan. Like, are you the new plastic? Like, where <laughs> just leaving your watches? But that's the thing now. Like, people are just leaving everything fully stickered for the next buyer, which is, I don't know. It's a bit of a shame to me, right? Because even cars, watches, shoes. Like for me, I'll just buy them and use them. I don't, I don't like the idea of just safe cleaning stuff. Omar says, pick it up with your other hand. Good point. There you Thanks. go. And Sturdy Danny says that's what they're for. Yeah, look, I mean, look, I wear my watches. Sometimes get, nobody wants to get scratches, but it is what it is. But the reality, JJ, is like, you know, six, seven years ago, you know, people didn't care about, like, as much about the scratches on watches, right? It was something that you could get by and say, you know, whatever. These days, it's like, you know, condition. Everyone wants sliders. Everyone wants mid condition, no scratches. And you see in all the ads, too, like, people are saying, oh, can polish for for a fee and stuff right like it's just you know it, it's gotten to the point where people just want pristine watches um you see that in cars too man people want pristine everything all the time and it's sometimes just not what ends up happening is it causes a lot of like fraud sometimes like in terms of like people you know, polishing pieces claiming they're not polished mm -hmm. or with cars it's like they end up painting cars and not telling anybody yeah to me it's kind of stupid i mean uh even like when I had my Breitling, right? I wore that watch probably the most of my life. I went through like a long period where that was the only watch I wore forever. Um, I really thought that like, you know, I wasn't like, I, I liked watches, but I thought one would be good, you know? And I didn't really feel a need to buy another one. I've hit that watch into the side of pools. I've thrown it across the room, <laughs> just being annoyed. <laughs> that watch was like a tank though. It never broke. Um, barely any scratches on it. Like, I think I got it cleaned up like once or twice probably two times and it looked like brand new you know what i mean just, it was all high polished anyway so they just rebuffed it real quick steamed it up a little bit and it was like brand new you know 
Uh, Dirty Danny, I agree with you. I don't get this whole buy, watch, and hide it away. I feel that way with everything, man. So Mike says, Archie told his friend to sell a bluesy and get a Calatrava. And Archie now bought a bluesy. Look, you got to really buy what you like. I think, uh, you know, Archie will recommend different watches on different days depending on his mood. So you can't really take that as like do your word of what to do. Hideki, uh, yeah, Ali just left like five minutes ago. He did the whole stream, but he just left like five minutes ago. We're going to wrap up in actually five minutes ourselves. We're just uh, wrapping up the last 10 minutes for him. He had, he had to go uh, do something. So I'll comment, on, I'll comment on the bluesy and the Calatrava piece, right? Like a lot of folks kind of compare the watches dial up, you know, all the time. Like one's a dress watch, one's a sport watch. The way I look at it is if you're a Calatrava buyer, you know, you're a lot of, well, a lot of paddock buyers, you know, care for finishing, care for the artwork and, and whatnot. And I think that it's two completely different, you know, two completely different pieces in that sense. Moving away from dress watch, sport watch, but more around like, you know, a watch that, you know, people are paying for the finishing, they're paying for the artwork versus a utilitarian piece that, you know, arguably with some gold is, is a luxury item um, versus an all gold or, or, you know, at least the case is gold in the Calatrava with, you know, a lot higher, you know, a lot higher attention to detail when it comes to the finishing. So, you know, when I always kind of look at Calatravas and stuff, I, you know, I always have to look at the the movement and the finishing. And to me, that's what I would be looking for. And and look, you know, you got certain watches that are, you know, in the low end of, of paddock that are finished, you know, amazingly. And to me, that's, that that's, it, it moves me away from thinking, oh, it's just a dress watch to actually caring more about the artwork and, and the dress watch itself. Mm -hmm. So Tan, I just, as we're talking, got a text, right? From yep. an AD, from an AD. Yep. That I shop at, that I'm friendly with. He yep. said, yep. Uh, they're having a wine tasting event to come by tonight. Do you think that's good news or bad, or like just regular, regular so, news? I've seen that where they they offer that and then if you text back saying is there anything for sale you know they'll usually say yeah anything but rolex um <laughs> right so, okay hey man I, for, if it was me i'd still if you're not doing anything i'd just go anyways right like it's always good mm -hmm. have a bit right, of fun. i went to his last one i actually met a few people it was pretty it was pretty yeah, fun like, why not like if you're not doing anything why, why not just go socialize a bit and at the end of the day even if you don't get anything it's still it'll still be a good time right yeah, like that. Well, that's the thing. I, I mean, I would go anyway just to stop by and say hello. I'm probably going to get ready after this. But uh, I was just curious, like, do you think that means something's available? That would be awesome. Nah, I, nice I, think, I think it's probably like they had an event and then they're just they're trying to fill it, right? They want to make sure people show up. So it's probably that. Right, right. That makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah, last time I was there, I met a, a couple of cool guys. Uh, McLovin says you're famous, JJ. You might get recognized. Never happened. I've never been recognized anyway. Ask if you could Gonzo stream it. No, I don't want to Gonzo. You know what's funny? I, 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 from the old streams back in the day, uh, Jin got recognized actually because he used to go on camera, and it was he was at some like <laughs> really low end dealer, and they're like, oh, you're the guy who like live streams on Archie, and he couldn't believe it that like you know it's it's not <laughs> the same demographic, but I guess that one like whoever was there at the store was a, a fan of the channel so mm. yeah i met some pretty cool uh, watch collectors there it was fun but um even if you go and you don't stay too long i think it's still fun to take a look and by the way i saw an awesome rendering today on uh, instagram it was like passion luxury watches or something like that yeah um, they had a rose gold sub with a chocolate dial and a chocolate bezel looks awesome uh, I'm not saying it would happen. But, but look, the sub they have played around with different dials. You got the um, there's the sub variant, the SABR, which has like a it's a, it's a similar it's like a sunburst blue. I don't know if it's similar to the bluesy dial, but you got mm -hmm. that. Obviously, you got the 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 sunburst gold green and all. Like they have they have played around with the sub dials. Um, I just think on a sixty or on a, on a um a seventieth like. I don't know, man. Seventy fifth, maybe seventieth. I don't know. I don't think they're gonna do anything drastic. And if they do, like it's probably like you said, precious metal, like a rose gold. Um, but that that would definitely be fire. I think if they did it. Yeah, I mean, th this this year they could really do two like small things and totally revamp two lines. Or they really just come out with a rose gold sub and make ceramic bezels for the precious metal and the two tone Daytonas. 
and you, you you pretty much wrap those both right up, you know? Yeah, man. I don't think it's going to be a big year. Like I, I think it, I think it'll be, I think the Daytona movement may get a refresh. That's the, that's the rumor at least. But mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be a big year for them. I think honestly, Patrick Philippe is probably going to have a lot of different stuff happening because maybe the 96 comes back as well mm-hmm. as their world time lineup is, is pretty much decimated right now. So they have to come out with a new world time, I think. Right. They, they, they discontinued quite a few models. Yeah, the fifty-two thirty in the in the regular standard metals, like the gold, white, gold, uh, yellow, gold, rose, is it, there's there is none in the current catalog. Um, hmm. So, and look, I mean, the Aquanaut in and of itself is also getting it's getting dated, right? Fifty-seven, fifty-one, sixty-seven is getting pretty dated these days. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it should be interesting to see. I, I would like to see. I mean, AP did a lot. They came out with a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know if this was like you know, it's like. I know every prices have been coming down on the secondary market, but you have to figure they were planning when things were booming, right? For this next year, upcoming year. So if the market took off, I would imagine everybody's heads in the game, right? To come out with some new stuff. So it should be well, everyone's talking about everyone's talking about the market slowing down, right? Like they're they're talking about um and look, this is just rumors. Like nobody really knows outside of if you get an actual export report from you know the Swiss watch industry. But most folks are saying that like the watch game is slowing down but like if you talk about rolex right like you saw rolex had a bit of a bounce back on the pepsi and the daytona yeah, yeah. it's 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 tough to say man because you would expect them not to bounce back so if they are bouncing back it's definitely showing some strength yeah yeah i agree i mean it's i think it's going to be choppy through the second half of this year but i mean bear markets don't last forever and the more people say like oh we haven't hit um like uh the worst part yet the the longer I disagree. I don't know. I mean, I think you'd see housing taking much more of a beating. It's come down a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, it's because, I mean, the job market's hot too, right? Like, you're not having, yeah. outside of a few industries, massive layoffs, so people still have money. And- well, that's the thing, right? It's it's a manufactured, they're trying to manufacture unemployment. Like, it's not like it's truly happening. Like, this is a totally different situation than 2010. People think well, it's not, like... Even in 2008, JJ, the, the watches didn't, necessarily take a huge dump either right like they were they were decently they were they were doing decent during the uh, the great recession so I, again right it, it's, it's who's buying these watches and with that in mind do i see it being like it was before where you know a lot of it's through crypto and another in the stock market booming and whatnot probably not i don't think it's going to have as high of a as high of a return as it used to but I think it's still going to remain strong. I think watch collecting is still very much um, on top of people's minds. They're, you know, folks aren't like, you know, even though interest rates are high and folks are, you know, obviously the mortgages have gone up, but I still think people uh, who have means, affluent people that are buying these pieces for well over retail, as well as those buying at retail are, are definitely not um, struggling. And, and there's other markets that are similar, right? Car market, exotic car market, you know, it's still, I mean, it's not as strong as it was, but people are still buying cars, so. Mm-hmm. That is true. Well, look, I think uh, we've given it a good run. Archie started, so we're probably going to get ready to wrap up. Now's last minute chance, guys. Get in those upvotes, super chats, and comments. Tell us now because we're about to wrap it up. Don't forget on your way out, if you can send me an upvote, I greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment for the stream. It pushes us out to the algorithm, gets other people watching, makes the chat more fun. Uh, I, agree. I appreciate everyone hanging today. Ali did a great job. Glad to fill in with Tan for the last uh, 10 minutes. It's been fun. Yes, sir. Uh, and Tan, you uh, going to be on tomorrow? or you? Yeah, I might do it. So, I'm, yeah, like I'm traveling uh, at some point tomorrow, just mm-hmm. back and forth and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if I have to go into the office or whatever, I may do I may do something earlier. Um, I'll let you know uh, either yeah. tonight or tomorrow morning, like if I do it earlier than that, but I'll try to get something done tomorrow as well. Sounds good. So we should have a stream from Tan tomorrow. Then Saturday night, the boys will be hanging. And Sunday will be our Sunday fun day. So we got a fun-filled weekend for you guys. Stay tuned for some action. All right, this is going to transfer you guys over to Archie. Uh, if you want to watch that, hang here, and it will send you over. Thank you guys for hanging with us today. And don't forget, wear your watches. Yeah.